Scott Dome watching what might be one of the most outrageous films that I've seen at Sundance Film Festival yet, and that is called The Polite Society. This stars the likes of Priya Kanzer and Rita Arya, which I love Rita from Umbrella Academy. So the second I actually saw that she was going to be in this, I did not know that before starting this movie. I got even more excited for this movie. And overall, this is a movie about a London schoolgirl whose tirelessly martial artist in training is Rhea Khan. In a determination to become a world-renowned stunt woman, she becomes crushed when her big sister Lena drops out of art school and starts dating Salim, the charming wealthy son of a prominent Shah family, and announces after barely a month that they plan to marry and move to Singapore. How could Lena abandon her artistic dreams and become some trophy wife? But Rita soon realizes that something isn't right, leaving her no no other choice but to enlist her friends in a daring mission to kidnap Lena from her own wedding. That's all you need to know. This is a fun movie. And that and that's when I come to Sundance, I knew like just seeing kind of the poster. I didn't watch the trailer that was out, but I knew this was probably going to be a fun movie. And after watching a really dark movie before this, I'm like, I'm going to pop this one on. And overall, I had a blast with it. I, I don't think the movie's perfect. We'll talk about that. But if you're just looking for something to like put a smile on your face... Th this is kind of one of those. And if you watched RRR uh, last year, which was a phenomenal movie that I was very late to the bus on, one thing I want to talk about is how that movie, in a way, touched on the superhero culture, but into like a different piece of time. And p the Polite Society isn't just like kind of a love letter to stunt women and stunt choreographers. It's also a love letter to action movies and comic book films and very much the outrageousness of films from say the 80s and 90s that go off in the most bombastic ways and that's something to really much appreciate with this movie. So before we get any further into this, if you're new here, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button as well as comment down below your guys' thoughts. I definitely want to hear your guys' thoughts if you're excited for this movie. If you're not, let me know down below. With any other movie review, let's dive into the pros on this one, which really come down to the performances here. And like I mentioned, I love Rita. And she was fantastic. She's a great sporting actress in here. And she really comes into her own. But truly enough, the big standout in here is Preya. Kansara, which I might be mispronouncing. So I heavily am sorry and apologize for that. I'm really bad with names a lot of the time, but Priya is excellent in here. As a protagonist, I completely and utterly loved her. Her charm, her charismatic, and just in general, her relationship that she has towards her sister is very inspiring. And she kicks ass in a lot of the different action sequences. And even down to the point of the way that the director actually handles this movie, which this movie is directed by Nita Manzor, who also wrote the script for this this kind of has vibes of like Scott Pilgrim versus the world. And I say that because a lot of the time you'll get like chapter one and it tells you what the chapter is. And then you'll get these scenarios where it's like this person versus this person. And it comes down to such a gratifying and fun over the top action sequence, which I do want to mention. I wish the action was filmed a little bit differently in certain scenes. But it's still, again, this movie feels like a great throwback to older stuff. So that might have been like a more stylistic choice to go with. But Nita Manzora does an amazing job with what she had written on the page and also is able to direct here and continue to have this outrageous tone for a majority of the film that continues to put a smile on your face. And again, the performances he's in, in here from like Preya is excellent. I mean, she plays off this incredibly well. But out of all the people... Like, every actor understood the assignment here. There is one that really went above and beyond, and that is Nimura Bucha, who a lot of people just probably saw in Miss Marvel as the villain in there. She was fantastic. But Nimura kills it. Uh, th her performance in here as, like, kind of the villain of the story is so over the top, but so fun. And I think that's the one thing is that I just had a blast watching this movie. Even with my issues kind of aside, I couldn't get enough of the fun of this and I felt that every single like act made the movie get better and better because honestly on the first act I was sitting there I was like this is cool stylistically this gets brownie points for me because I love the stylistic approach that they're really much doing in this but I can't help but say that I would actually rather have something more to this and and that's again just personally me I I was like okay I don't really know how to feel and this and the second act kicks in and it gets a little bit more outrageous and I'm like Okay, this is giving us unique things, getting a little bit repetitive, but that's okay. The second the third act kicked in, I was completely sold. 
on what this concept was, what this movie was, and I was like, yeah, this is this is a fun movie that if you like go to a big theater to watch, this is gonna be a blast. I think with that, let's jump into my issues before we end this review. And my issues really do come down to that first act and a little bit of the second act. Some of this plot lines in here don't click enough with the outrageous tone that they're setting up, which is okay. But as outrageous as this movie gets, I kind of wish they would have played into some of those moments a little bit more and even gave a little bit more emotion to some of the sisterhood and like relationships that we actually see in this movie between our two main characters. Besides that, it's really just those certain moments that just don't click with the entire tone. But it is a fun movie, and it's just one that I think it's going to put a smile on your face. It's something that you've definitely seen before, but in the stylistic and tone, I love what they went for. So the Polite Society is over-the-top fun in every sensational way. It's stories, it's twists, it's performance, it's score, and of course the fight scenes. And sometimes it's outrageous tone doesn't click with every piece of story. It can definitely result in some dull points, but by the third act, you'll be cheering, you'll be having fun, you'll love the cast. And overall, if you just want a good time at the theaters, Polite Society is that good reminder of what an outrageous fun movie that we need more of them in this time and age. So with all that said, I'm going to give the Polite Society a B-. Thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. You guys are really the best. Tons of Sundance content coming up over the next few days. The Last of Us episode 2 just dropped, so make sure to hit that like and subscribe button for more content on a daily basis. But of course, until next time, stay classy.